Good morning, happy Friday, or well, if you're watching this on the day it comes out, happy Thursday. We've just arrived to a little campsite which is north of um, La Cola in the high country and it's called Long Toms. So Chris has just done a walk around, I haven't actually seen it yet, but he's asked me to get on the radio and help him get in because he reckons it's a bit pokey, so I'll be curious to see. I don't know what I'm looking at yet. Thinking about coming down, going a ride, heading towards that tree and then backing up and finding a nice little spot there for the van. Such a cool spot. Yeah, it really is. This would be the most angles the van's ever been on. Oh yeah. So where exactly are you going to park? Um, I'm kind of thinking on an angle facing out that way. It's fairly flat and fairly um, solid here. And we get bulk sun. And then the fire pits over there and vice versa. It's just a matter of wiggling in and positioning the van correctly. So Chris is just clearing chairs so that we can drive straight in. There's a couple of little divots here in the ground. You might be able to see them there and there. And it looks like someone else did this at some point. It must have been quite wet. So it's not wet anymore. Oh, it looks perfect. That might be ideal because it's giving us a heap more room like you're saying. Yeah, and it'll be good for shots, it'll be good for just everything. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Um, maybe try happens. and bring the front of the actual van kind of around where the fire pit is. That way any smoke is going to yeah, yeah. go away from the yeah, fire. I'll, just, I'll drive in you just tell me where you, where you think is good. All right. Actually, surprisingly pretty level. Yeah, we're just judging by those wheel holes. It looks pretty bloody good. That's probably what they're for. Are we off the road? I need to make sure I've got enough room to unhitch. Hang on. Oh, heaps of room. Heaps of room, babe. No. Can I hear screaming? Yes. Go outside. Yeah, I, I know. We nearly there. unhitched, and once we're unhitched, you can come outside. Do you understand? I want to go climb the rocks. Once there's, yeah, once the risk is all gone, all is good. You can come outside. Until then, you have to wait. Don't what? you dare put the window up on me. What? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, We're out finding some kindling, some bits of wood. We found some pretty good wood because we've got an ice big fire pit as you've seen at the campsite there. We're going to try and utilize depending on where, on wind. I hope the wind is our friend because we're very close to it and it could destroy the van in seconds and we have to shut all the windows. It's a joy of having a portable fold down little fire pit with us that we can not put in a fire pit but we can put it in our own and then sort of move it away. So that's a nice little joy of that. But yeah, not a bad little spot in here. It's bloody, it's nice, really nice. And the, I think the best part about it, there's no one here, is there? No, it's pretty empty. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of like a, you got a road and it comes down onto a point and it follows the river right, around, right the way around. It's, there's like little hot spots in between here. We can go camping, but a lot of it on one side is more camper trailers, rooftops, all that sort of stuff. And then way back where we've just come from is more for your bigger setups. So there's a nice little entry road there that you've seen us come in on. And we've got that big area under the tree that we've got. And then there's one just next door to it as well that you could utilise as well. So not bad. If it was busy, probably wouldn't come down because you'd have to get in here pretty bloody early. Uh, we're very lucky to be down here and have it to ourselves. Mm. Being a Friday as well, it's sort of on the weekend, coming into the weekend. So the one, the one thing we've noticed a lot of, obviously back home, we'd, uh, we'd sneak away for the weekend and do some camping and stuff like that. Get there early. Yeah, but I guess the joy of being full time, you can get to a place like this, spend a bit extra, um, and then yeah, have an extra couple of days when everybody goes back home again. So works out yeah. pretty good. It's pretty good. Although here there's not many sites, so yeah, I don't, even if someone comes, they're not really going to have many places to set up. Yeah, 100%. Like where we are, we can't have anyone next to us. So we've basically got that to ourselves, which is really cool. Um, I was going to say too, it says on Wikicamps that there is phone service here. And technically, there is about 200 metres <laughs> away from us, but where we are, there isn't. So 
yeah there's no phone service so that's the other thing too if this site wasn't free you go about five ten minutes up the road and there's about ten of these sorts of sites up the road so yeah. one of them is going to have space somewhere along the way yeah there's plenty to choose from that's probably the best part about this little area mm. um you've got la cola itself so that's just back there probably what half a k you reckon yeah half k back there so you've got full reception you've got all the shops a little general shop we might go in there in the next couple of days and have a bit of a look around and show you guys um, and then yeah there's more campsites as you f sort of go further up north so and i reckon yeah. we should do maybe two or three nights here and then move one of the other ones up the road yeah maybe totally. on, on monday we'll move again because today's friday so we'll move yeah. on monday well see we got this to different. ourselves now on the weekend we'll um yeah we'll utilize something on a monday or tuesday and have go a real for, good look around we'll go for a drive and go look at them first yeah suss them out sounds good all right back to the firewood collecting not that there's much <laughs> there's not much around here that's the joys of these sort of free camps it's uh, always hard to find good timber. Some really big logs back there. I mean, massive. I'll show you when we go back. It's uh, just kindling sort of stuff. It's a bit hard. Let's see how we go. That's what we found here. It's called an everlasting straw flower. So before we moved to our actual site, we were parked up on the side of the road here so Chris could come for a walk. And Jada found these. I don't know if you can hear this. Hang on. They're like... It's, it's like sun-dried. Yeah. But that's it alive and they smell like des design divine <laughs> um but apparently they use them for um essential oils or something essential it? oils yeah. i was gonna say aromatherapy what's well, kind of aromatherapy they use them as an essential oil and it's good as an anti-inflammatory there you go so the everlasting straw flower it's actually really cool it's pretty Oh, it looks like people have had some fun with some river rocks down here. Stacking them up. I haven't seen that since cans. I haven't done that for a very long time. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> oh, I'll make your own, Jada. So here you go. You can put it up there. Oh, yeah, good luck. So just come for, a, come for a walk and Sean's like, Oh my God, this is awesome. Why didn't we go here? This is why I do the walking. Oh, stop it. <laughs> we got a killer spot back no, there. No, no, no. This is just another good one. This is a good one yeah. for everybody to know about. This one would be harder to turn around. Oh, it'll be a lot more uh, yeah, maneuvering. It's, it's a dead end. Yeah, it comes to a dead end. I think it, yeah, well, that would have been tricky as. But it would have been stunning when we got here and we would oh, have very much very appreciated cool. it. Look! It's like a zebra rock. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Oh yeah, look, it really looks like zebra rock. It's really cool, eh? It's a joys of uh, river rock. You get so many different types. It's really cool. It's soothing. It's relaxing. Well, yeah, it is because you find them on relaxing things. Rivers flowing, rain falling. What? <laughs> What'd you find, Jack? You got some kindling. It's the only one we got. It's the only one we've found so far. Look at these things. Bizarre looking thing, isn't it? <laughs> I was just saying I put it in my hair like a little decoration or something. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Nature's baubles for Christmas. It's funny because they're like, I don't know, they look like they're going to grow into some sort of flower. Yeah. But from afar, they look like little cocoons almost. Well, that's what I thought they were to begin with, and then I realized they're a plant. Yeah. But, yeah. And they're like squishy. Ouch. Yeah, right. That's cool. Any, anybody that's out there that knows plants. What is it? What on earth is that? That jump is always so bad. It's so tight around yeah. his head. <laughs> <laughs> Just about pulled your face off, mate. Nearly. Holy moly. Holy moly. Oh, what the moly? Holy moly, fuck the moly. What are you throwing in? Rocks. Rocks. I have one more in there. One more? One more? 
Oh, how many rocks have you got? About ten. About ten. That's a big Well, we've got back, we've got a little bit of kindling. We've actually tucked into that big log and the chainsaw has actually done me quite justice. It's one of the smallest ones, ones on the range for steel, uh, but it, it goes bloody hard, I'll tell you what, it's actually really good. So it's a, uh, a steel 170. It's one of the uh, stubby blades, the short blades. And the big reason why I got that one is because it's just, it's petrol, I wanted to go petrol instead of electric. I had electric and I burnt through too many of them and I just, I gave up. So I went, I'm going back to petrol, I'm going to do that. That's how I'm going for the rest of it now. So I went and got myself a steel, but I got the, the short one, the more compact one, because it's obviously very good being in a caravan, being able to store it just about anywhere. I might actually go through a few of the little details and uh, like the bag and bits and pieces that I've got and how I carry it and transport it, because it's actually really handy. Uh, but if you're looking at a chainsaw or something like that and a petrol one, would recommend the, the Steel 170. I'll put the details in the description below if you want to check it out. If it's something that you're looking at getting. It's done really bloody well because that's a huge log, a massive log. So between that and the axe, we got a few good pieces out of it. And uh, I really hope that they burn really well tonight. So we've uh, just recently just recently uh, relocated the fire. So you probably would have seen when we rocked up, it was right up next to the caravan. And if you look down here, you can actually see that the fire must have been there originally. And it makes more sense being down here because it's right down by the water. You've got a nice open area and it means that we can keep the smoke and ash and everything out of the fire away from the caravan. I'm just thinking ahead here. I can just imagine the comments. <laughs> oh yeah, here right I am. Now. Comment, here I am just having a good old chat while you're and in the I'm back shoveling. sweating. Oh, it's funny. It's a joint, joint effort this one. I was over there for a good while smashing that log. I've, I've helped relocate. You haven't seen all of it. I've seen a little bit of it. And yes, Sean is still shoveling, but we have done a team effort. Don't worry, it's not all Sean. <laughs> so here's the new fire pit, which is all nice and pretty. Rocks are laid out. We've got the timber over here that I was chopping up just earlier. Nice little uh, square blocks there. I'm really hoping that burns well. We'll soon find out tonight. But I do have a bag over the back there behind Sean and the white bag have been carrying around since Dargo. We had some really good timber down there, so I couldn't uh, couldn't leave it behind without grabbing a bag full. How's the temp, babe? Woo! She is at Ziggy. <laughs> Ziggy heat. <laughs> like the dial's going around, it goes to 280, and then there's probably another good 100, probably 150 that goes into the red, and then it goes past the red, Where's the Ziggy logo is, so we're talking Ziggy heat. We're at Ziggy, we're like right down. Check it out. So Ziggy's at Ziggy heat, she is raging. We got potatoes in there. We got some uh, pork chops that we got from a Woolworths in Barnsdale. Tell you what, if you haven't been to the Woolworths in Barnsdale, go and check it out. It's like a butcher, shopping center, bakery, all in one. It's probably the best Woolworths I think I've been in, in a long time, a bloody long time. So this is where we got the uh, the pork chops from. So we're gonna get them all seasoned up. We're gonna try and throw them on here and try for a bloody good crackle. So if it doesn't work out, I'll make it happen. But pretty excited. Got a killer view at the back here. We got Jack screaming in the background. What more would you want? Serenity. What are you doing, Jack? Oh, you dropped your ice block. You're gonna have to put it in the river now. What have you been up to? I've been digging down here with, hang on one second, with um, 
some shovels. I've got the big one here and one small big. one. I've been digging up and I've actually found, I think, some one. maybe crystals. I found a thunder egg, which I know that for sure. Can you show it to us? It's small, but it's hang on, hang cool. on. Oh, I can't tell if it's going to focus. Hang on. But anyway, that's a thunder egg. This rock doesn't look like a, uh, what's it called, crystal. But when I tried to crack it open with the shovel, I tried to bang the shovel. I go like this and I push it down really hard with force. And it looks like that it's got silver in it. I don't know if it's just a thing that rocks do or... Show us up close. It actually does. Yeah, it does look a bit like it, doesn't it? Yeah, so I'm yeah. not entirely sure, but it looks like it. I found a really weird looking bit of glass. It looks like a dog sitting down. Hang on. Focus! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it looks like a dog sitting down, I think. Then I've got one more thing. Hang on, where is it? Let me just grab it out of my little pocket. I found this piece of quartz. And, but when it's in the sun, it shines really pretty. Very cool, Jada. Yes. See what else you can find, eh? Yeah. Hopefully I can find another thunder egg. Tell you what, I'm pretty bloody excited about these ones. I'm really hoping I can sort of do something with that fat. Got some serious heat going on here and I'll put it on the trivet to try and bring it up so I don't burn it from the bottom, but it gives it enough heat to sort of get that pork crackle going. So see how we go. Worst case, I'll just cut it off and I'll uh, barbecue it. Comes up trumps every time. Sun's just gone down. There's a big mountain over the back there, as you've probably seen. We can see the, the shade coming for us and it's finally gone, but Really cool to see that go down over behind the mountain there. And I tell you what, this is just insane. It's such a cool spot. Hello. So Mr. Photographer out here, cooking up his pork chops. They're nearly ready. He's taken off the rind so we can just grill them up basically and get some crackling because that's what everyone wants, let's be honest. And then in here, we've got Windy Jack because he's ready to eat and ready for bed. It is what, uh, we're looking at 6.40. So he usually goes to bed about seven o'clock and he's well ready for bed. And me right now, I'm being perfect. Oh, you're trying to be perfect, aren't you? So Jada's also had a shower. She's enjoying, where is it? Oh, Nintendo time. So that's what she's doing up here. And then um, it'll be dinner and bed for both of them. Not a bad dinner, eh? Mm. You are All the points. best cook ever. Enjoy it, Jada? Mm -hmm. I think Jack enjoys it, but he can't tell me because he can't hear me. He's smashing it though. He's nearly had a whole, whole thing to himself. I am loving it. I think that I'm probably going to drink the um, juice from this. It's so good. Mm. That's a big deal for Jada. <laughs> Very big deal. That this doesn't happen. Pretty good. Can't beat a bit of pork. That's a basket out of the car. Yeah. Because oh, Chris has decided to have a week off beer. Oh my god. But it means I've got a whole basket that I can use. <laughs> There's a whole 55 litre fridge in the back that has nothing in it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got two little baskets in the back. You can bring it out and you fill it up and away we go. Perfect. So that's all our lunch gear for today. Gonna head out this morning. Yeah. We're find gonna some go... trucks. 
Um, I think we're going to go for a bit of a loop track and we found a really cool lookout that we drove past. So we're going to go there and have a look at that. Um, and then, I don't know what else. We'll just see what happens on the time, at the time. I want to go see La Cola and just have a nosy what that is as well. Yeah, well, it's yeah. literally just up the road, so. Yeah, it'd be a good day. Yeah, I'll check that out and do a bit of exploring. So we're all packed up, got all the food in the car, got all our bits and pieces, got the kids dressed, ready to go. One big thing I like doing when we're in a free camp is making sure it, all the easy accessible things are locked so we just went around i've locked at least one of those locks on each of those um toolbox doors the outdoor kitchen obviously the front door just anything that can be open because one thing we have never been broken into but one thing we know from being up north is as long as something is locked or has a lock on it it's a deterrent so if you can see it from afar that it's going to be a challenge it normally means 90 percent of the time they're going to leave it alone if somebody wants to come out and do something that they shouldn't be doing so it's just one thing we've always done or i like to do each time especially out here because there's there's not a lot of people out here it's quite remote it means you can come out here and do just about anything you wanted if you really wanted to do something like that um, so it's just nice to have a little deterrent there and just double checking stuff because it could be that one time that someone comes along opens the, to the toolbox and takes half your gear out and that's just a pain in the ass it's like losing your credit card or something like that you've got to go through the whole process again so yeah just a little hot tip for you if you're in free camps and you're quite remote just go around and check everything it's just peace of mind to know that yeah all your stuff's going to be nice and safe before i go out as well the other thing you know what it's like if you're in a free camp even in weather like this you leave it all closed up and you get back in the afternoon and it's like oh, it's just so hot in here so I don't know if you can see, but this window here is actually open. Um, there's about a centimetre gap there. We've got like a security setting, so you can kind of have the window open that much and you can't actually move it or do anything with it. So I've got this one in our kitchen window open like that. And then we've got an exhaust fan on the roof, which I just put on low, which means it draws air in through here and out of the roof. So by the time you come back, it's not musty. I mean, not that it would be, it's a, it's a nice new van, but it's just doing its job then and you don't it's come keeping, back to a keeping the air flow. hot, humid caravan. It's keeping fresh air coming through and it, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't get all humid and hot and sticky. Other than that, I just turn everything off as well. So I turn off the water, I turn off all the pumps because if, if something needed to repressurize while you're out and your pump's running all day and then it's hot and decides to break, you know, like you don't want that. So we just turn everything off and good to go. Save power. Holy moly. I guess when you get into uh, quite remote towns, prices go up. But uh, two dollars fifty-four point nine. <laughs> That's unrelated. Wow. <laughs> So we've been out this morning, we stopped through La Cola. La Cola is honestly a caravan park, um, a youth group place like where like a school can stay sort of thing and the general store slash petrol station that's that's pretty much all that's there and like fire rescue and a couple other things so where we're camped is only about five minutes up the road from there and um we've gone past our camp today and headed further up the road where there's a heap of more camps i'm actually going to put in right there next to us the details on wiki camp so you can see there's a heap of camps there and um we're just going to we're just going to drive past all those now and have a nosy because we're thinking we might move in a couple of days and try something else while we're in the area. But technically, this is the beginning of the Alpine National Park as well. So these are all national park sites. We can no longer drone. Now we're in a national park either. So keep that in mind. It's like the one thing um, I hate, hate looking at that sign when it says, Welcome to the Alpine National Park. I'm like... Why? <laughs> we actually looked into getting the drone license for Victoria and it's not really something that's achievable. Very, very, very strict. Oh, that thought. Very strict on their drone rules yeah. to the point that it's like almost impossible. It'd just be you way need, too hard. <clears throat> you need your pilot's license um, and then you need to have like a run sheet for all of the shots that you're taking, the dates that you'll be taking them, a rain contingency plan. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> flight plan. There was, like, yeah, the flight plan. Like, like this all needs to, to be ready. Just to get one shot or one like bit of droning would take yeah. so much work. So and considering just, uh, we don't even know where we're going to be tomorrow. <laughs> like we can't plan too that. Hard, too hard, too <laughs> hard basket. So unfortunately yeah. we can't do too much, but there has been a few spots that we have been able to do it. Um, I think the best part about that is the HEMA map that we've got. It's come in real handy yeah. this, like, these last few weeks around 
Um, you can tell when area. you're in and out of a national park, which is really helpful. Yeah, so we'll have especially to show for you us. That. <laughs> yeah, because it's very hefty fines. I think it's like starts at five grand or something. Oh, three, oh, three, three thousand grand. and up. Yeah, so I don't want to be doing anything of that. So we're just doing the right thing and doing what we can. Um, yeah, and try and make the most of it. So we're going to take you for a trip. We'll show you some of these campsites as we have a look at them. Um, maybe we'll even move to one in a few days' time mm. and then go out on a bit of a full drive train journey. So not long ago, we actually asked on Instagram what you want to see more of, what you're not enjoying seeing, things like that. And one of the things that you wanted to know more about was the campsites we stay at and how we get there and how we find them as well. So right now, no, that one's okay. Um, right now, what we're doing, we're actually driving along with a HEMA map on. Um, we're only, like I said, 15 minutes up the road from where we're staying, but on HEMA map it shows you all the camps that are coming up. I've also been through wiki camps and looked at all the reviews and the pictures and love hearted the ones that I really like. And we're basically going along and just checking them out at the moment. So, a bit of a recon draw. Yeah, because there's no point bringing the van into the high country in a location where it says only camper trailers can go, only tents can go, you know, if we can't get there sort of thing. So. Um, this but is a good it, way for us to figure out like where we can and can't take the van because yeah. if there's a low lying tree and you're on a one way track next to water and a rock face next to you and you can't go anywhere, <laughs> yeah, you don't want that situation. So yeah. what we're doing right now is just checking that we can go to these spots. But uh, yeah, recon driving is probably mm. definitely the best one if you can do it because it means sometimes you can end up with some of the killer spots because a lot of people always say, how do you get these spots? You always have the best camp spots. It's because we put the time and effort into finding them. Yeah. And everybody can do the exact same thing. It just, yeah, put a little bit more effort in. So we're currently coming into a site as we speak. Hang on. Oh, a nice big open one. So we've just come off the road. It was a bit of a U-turn off the road. But other than that, um, it's just a really, really big open area. And it looks like you can probably get down to the river down here somewhere. But So it's small, a little bit tight at the entry, but 100% can get the van in here if you wanted to. So a great thing about the HEMA and why we're using HEMA is not only does it show you all the details and tracks, but you can actually put landmarks on there. So you can Hang put... On. Let me film that then. Oh, yeah. Here so you go. can actually put little markers and so Sean just found out that you can put a little uh, tent Well, icon. you can put any icon you want on there, really. But yeah, we just found out there was a tent on there. We're like, we didn't know they were there. Oh, I just haven't looked for them, to be honest. I just never went through it. But I'll show you. So hang on. Hold that. I can't do both at the same time. So you go onto the tent. It's not normally. So edit mark. Um, and then icon. And then under here... There's all these like different. Oh, look, skull. Don't go. <laughs> Turn around. But there's all these different things that you can add there. So um, I've been adding tents for just sites that we found that we would like to go to. So um, as we go along this road, you can see there's a couple little tents there. So that's basically like, oh, that's a good one for the caravan. This is a good one for the caravan. This one here, I'm actually going to change. I want this one to be about droning. So um, for droning, I'm trying to remember what I was using. Um, that one, done. So I use a pin for droning. So when you go back over here, hang on, I'll show you. All the way over here. So this is where we were last time we were in the high country. You want to change the map? We went along a certain road and you can see there's a couple of pins there that's because they were good droning spots so we knew when we took the van we could drone there um that there is just like a key location the flag that we wanted to go see kingswell bridge um then we got to like certain points of the track where we couldn't go any further so you can see this cross means that was too deep to cross so we couldn't go that way so next time we go there and do these tracks again you don't need to film me because it's on here <laughs> <laughs> so many bloody cameras oh, but so next time we go there it just means that we can review this again and go oh remember we did that crossing and it was too deep and you can add notes and details in there too so you know what it's all about but um that's all we're doing today is a bit of a recon drive so yeah it's and if you oh the other thing too if you're looking at this app and you're like well what app is that and how can you access it because we've actually got no internet right now there's no service it's just yeah. working on gps this is um called four wheel drive maps by HEMA. 
So I think it was ninety nine ninety five, and you get a download. I think there was two. Every there was two one. two packs. It was like a forty nine ninety nine, and then there was a hundred dollar one. Yeah. But the fifty dollar one was only for a certain amount of time, where you can only do so much with it, and then obviously. I'll, um, what I'll do, I think I'll we'll just suss put it out again, because we've had this for a couple of well, pretty since much since the Cape. Yeah. yeah. So we've had it a hell of a long time, but um, again, it's just so so handy for exactly like this. Are you talking? You want to say something to YouTube? Hi the... YouTube. Hi. Oh my god, he actually said hello for a change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we found our couple of campsites that we like the look of that I think will be suitable as well for caravans. So that's that done for the day because that won't matter now for a couple of days depending on weather as well. But now we're going to go forward driving. So behind me there is the mountain. Mount Margaret track. I didn't actually look at the name. So I've kind of plotted out a route that we're going to take, which is from Hema Maps. Um, one of the mountains that we went past the other day, it looks like a ridge more than a mountain sort of thing. It actually looked undrivable, but there was a track that went up it. So we're like, well, let's go do that then. So that's today's trip. If it turns out to be fun and not too hectic, we might even do this round trip when we do the camp out and take some people up here. Uh, it's really hard with four wheel driving when you've got a group of people. If you've never done it before and you don't know the capabilities of the people you're four wheel driving with, it makes it really difficult. So, yeah, so this is kind of our recon drive and a trip for us. See what it looks like. What pressure are you going to? We're going to put 20 in the front and about 25 in the back. Only reason I do probably a little bit more in the back is just because of the extra weight. Otherwise, um, she'll probably balloon out more than what I needed to. So, with that extra weight in the back, extra weight in the back, <laughs> <laughs> that extra weight in the back will balloon the tyres out about as much as I would at the front with the 20s. So, yeah, see how we go. You can always go low if you need to, but I find 20s pretty good for this sort of rocky, sort of hard dirt sort of terrain. So, yeah. just made it to the first high point there's a helipad there and it's about a thousand fifteen meters above sea level so fair, fair way up it's a stunning view when you get a nice little spot here um, it's actually quite open here there's probably a good 180 a bit more degree view of where we are and the mountains and the tracks and the water seriously this is why high country is so amazing there is so much on offer down here tracks everywhere there's not many places you can go where there's this amount of rugged landscape and then look out and almost nearly every ridge, probably a good 80% of every ridge is a track just going up. It's just crazy, absolutely crazy. Even though today's not a stellar day, not a fantastic day, it's still an amazing view. So cool. High country, you are one beautiful beast. This is so, so good. So we got the cooker out again today. Love this thing, it's so bloody good. Um, what have we got on the menu today? I think we got salad wraps. So the kids have got some uh, corn thins, I think, and a few bits and pieces, a bit of fruit and stuff to keep them occupied. But uh, it's just come on sort of just past 12. We thought, bugger it, we'll pull up somewhere nice and scenic. So behind us, we've got a killer view. Nothing but just high country for miles. That gives me vertigo. That gives Sean vertigo. She's just gone down to have a look and it's like a sheer drop. But it's probably, you know, 10 metres behind us, which is not so bad. No, thank you. <laughs> so we've got some bacon. This is a bit of a, a regular cook-up that we do in the, in the van. Well, particularly me and Jada. I got Jada onto this as well. So we do a bit of bacon. We get one of the Woolworths salads. And we obviously put that into a bowl so we can access it and do what we want with it. But basically a good handful of salad. Cook up a little bit of bacon. Oh, I was actually melting that on. How good's that? So yeah, wrap, salad, 
a little bit of sauce, cheese, cooked bacon, wrap it up, and I'm gonna try to attempt to uh, crisp it up here on this, toast it on this, and then she's a toasted salad bacon wrap with a nice dollop of uh, barbecue sauce inside. So yeah, it's a bit of a regular thing we do in the mornings for brekkies or even like a lunch sometimes. Super simple, super quick, costs almost next to nothing, and it fills the hole, which is what it's all about. So that's what's on the menu today. Jack needs to poo. No, he needs to poo. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Jack needs to poo. So Jack, if you need to poo, we're gonna take off all of your pants and shoes and you've gotta do this. We're gonna make a hole and you poo in a hole. Yeah. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> He's almost excited. Where is it, Mom? Where is it? Where's the hole? Yeah. We're gonna go make one. All right, well, um, I'll be back. <laughs> So I'm having wraps. We always get the mission ones. You get the roast, roasted garlic. You won't regret it. If you love wraps, so bloody good. And you love garlic. It's a really good balanced mix. And it's the only wraps we get. So I'm having a wrap. Shan's gonna have a bowl of salad because she's gluten free and can't have gluten. So we're gonna, I think this is a Mexican mix. It's a, like lettuce, carrot, cabbage, corn, bits and pieces in there. It's really nice, really simple. And the package you always get, they always come with like little extras. So this one's got cheese and a nice Mexican sauce. Sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't. Probably, oh, I might give it a crack today, see how we go. Bit of extra cheese in there. Now yeah, I'll just mix up a bit of that. Put these in there. Just a good little handful. I won't go too much, because this is Sean's as well. It's amazing how much you can fit in a wrap, I'll tell you that much. Put a little I do that. Do you do poos? Yeah. Well done, good boy. So Jack just did poos in the bush and he's very proud of it. It's good on you. Well done. So I don't know, this is how I do it. I like to fold the bottom, then the sides. <laughs> now you got that nice fold there, you don't get any dripping. And then I'm going to put this side down and toast it so it holds it together. And then hold it, hopefully that'll hold. And then I can toast the other side and we've got a nice salad wrap, toasted wrap. So here we go. Well, it's just crisping up really nice. I think that uh, bacon Ooh. fat is really, really yeah, helping. Wow. Perfect. Not taking long at all. If I didn't get interrupted with the big poo, I would have sorted the kids out first. <laughs> All good. Well, they've already eaten something, so they're not famished. Yeah. They had something just before we started the track. Mm, that's so good. It's very nice. It's very nice. It's very nice. Would you eat that again? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Whenever I eat stuff like this, it reminds me from, I don't know why, but it reminds me from Shaggy from Scooby-Doo for some reason. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That's very random. It's always it random. You, say, you save that, babe. You don't eat all that. Look how crispy they are. I want them. I did this for you. Okay, cool. I can at least have one. Yeah, one. <laughs> one. See? This is, this is a battle we have with bacon. We this is a bacon, bacon problem. We have bacon issues. Jada's been hanging off to the side. Waiting to show you something. What is it? I made a bouquet. Mm. I use pretty much every flower that is here, but just one of them. I've got around and I pick some. I even made one for Jack. Here, Jack. Can I show it to the camera? Huh? Show it to the camera, Jack. Yeah. Look, you show your little flowers to the camera, Jack. Show your little flowers. Jack, the camera wants to see the flowers. All right, well, Jack's not interested. But... Yeah, but anyway, I made this pretty bouquet. It's got purple flowers, it's got yellow flowers, it's got these weird ball things. I added some green stuff in it and that's pretty much it about it. It's pretty cool though. Oh, Jack threw his bouquet away. I wonder if the rules are the same here as WA and if you can pick wildflowers. I was just about to say. Mm. Maybe. I really hope it, it isn't because it's not allowed to pick wildflowers, 
books. Huh? I'll research that. <laughs> I, I didn't know either, so you can't mm. blame it on me. <laughs> That's all that I found. In the mud hole? Oh, oh. That's deep. Well, that was pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. That was a lot deeper than oh. that. Oh, we got steam coming off the motor or the exhaust. <laughs> That's how deep it was. It's crazy. We're going along these tight tracks. You can see the trees there. They're just hitting the mirrors. <laughs> and you can hear them as they touch the sides of the car. But we're so lucky because now we've got PPF. It just doesn't matter. You spend the extra money to protect your car if you're going to do stuff like this. I'm still yet to see it heal itself because we haven't really done anything extreme yet. But uh, after doing a few tracks today and some of this tight stuff, I'm going to be super curious to see how it comes out. I want to go over the car when we get back and then see what's there and then yeah, give it a couple of days to heal itself because I'm very, very curious. There's probably as many as you are as well. It's one of those things that just doesn't sound right. It's like, how? How does it heal itself? But I'm keen. Super keen to check it out. Every time we wash the car, it still looks new. And we've done a lot of these little tracks now and we've washed the car quite a few times and there's not one mark on it. So although we might not notice it today, Maybe it was a mark, and then it's just not by the time we wash it, you know? It's like, born, yeah, it's just so hard to know. Well, uh, I haven't really looked at them to be honest because we haven't done too much, but we've done a bit. But it was funny because we were at a caravan park a few, well, about a week ago, um, and someone came up and said, Oh, is that a new car of yours? You, you just get that car. I said, No, no, it's, it's a bit over two year old. And he's like, Wow, okay, cool. Jeez, uh, I didn't even know, I didn't even <laughs> think it'd be that, that old. Because obviously the PPF has just kept it nice and clean and smeg and it actually really just gives it a nice shine. So it looks like a, a new car every time. Oh, scratchy, scratchy. <laughs> There's been a lot of it through this one. This is a really tight one. You're only one way in, one way out. You're committed as soon as you come into it. Oh, you can hear it. <laughs> This is a good test track. <laughs> I'm feeling better about it than usual because of the PPF. <laughs> Normally I'd be sitting there cringing like this as you yeah. go through. It's It'll the be interesting worst. to see how it looks. I'm super curious now. Yeah. But that's a, that was a good little track and it's still going. She's very tight. <laughs> Look at it, what track? Basically overgrown. <laughs> well, that's why we put this on our cars. So we're just driving along and then we're like, oh, there's a car ahead of us and he doesn't look like he's on a very good angle, I'll show you. I was going to say, it's been pretty tame. I was thinking, high country is notorious for lots of things happening and finally we've come across something <laughs> that's yeah. possibly a sticky situation here. How looks like he he's taking a there though? Like, that's a bad placement. He's taking a bad line there, that's for sure. Well, they got all the snatch gear out, they got the snatch straps, they got all the bits and pieces. Look like they're winching out at the moment. So I'm not going to intervene too much unless they really need it. There's plenty of people there. There's no point going over and trying to be that other helping hand when you've already got so many there. It just gets confusing yeah. and complicated sometimes. So I'm just we'll watching them. It go. looks like they're having problems with the winch, like it wouldn't come out or lack of communication or something. Yeah. Mm. Oh, a bit of entertainment for the afternoon, how good's that? I'll just sit here and watch for a while. Yeah. So note to self, don't take the left line. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be taking that one. Well, I was going to say, I'm probably going to get out and film you up that one then. I feel like we need to now. Yeah. <laughs> really go. He's, so we're going to record this. On. Oh, wow, that's a decent little hole. Yeah, wow. Look at what he just... Wow. Do you know, old mate's a bit silly standing behind. Yeah, and probably not a good spot. Oh, I can kind of see why he went that line. He, he, he was went trying to go, to go over the top of it and missed it. Yeah, he went to go out through that big rut that's there. He's nervous. You can tell he was about to go over his winch line and they're going, stop, stop. No, he'd be, he'd he's be just, packing it. He would have just driven over it. Oh, that's funny. He probably feels rushed as well because we're here. Yeah, there's nothing hey, worse than having a I'm, few people behind you. If you are those people and you're watching us on YouTube right now, commentate your recovery <laughs> don't take it personally it's no different to what other people would probably oh, say about us doing things it gets the blood pumping that's for sure adrenaline's high 
He'd be so glad to be out of that now. That left side, it kind of looks all right, but it doesn't from this perspective. But when the car's over, it's quite dark and deep. Yeah, I can I can understand now why he went into that. I'm kind of glad I've seen him come out of it because it's actually a lot bigger than what obviously looks like. Yeah. Here. Oh. Well, um, I'm definitely going to walk up to the top of that hill and film you. Let's do it. Yep. I'm just walking down the hill and there's like this little creek and it's perfectly clear because no one's driven in it for a bit. Can you hear the frogs? Look, it's all clear over the road until Chris comes through anyway. Why is there red lights? Oh, you've got your LED lights on underneath. Yeah, they're green, now they're red, now they're blue. <laughs> Disco Nissan. <laughs> Had a good bit of skid there. Yeah, that was actually uh, quite a little You little got quite slide. close to the hole and I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I tried to get over as far as possible because it was quite wet at the bottom there and I thought it was going to kick out like it kind of did. But uh, just give it the berries, get you out every time. <laughs> It's got a big piece of its rock missing. <laughs> Mom, it's like a teeth. It's got a big mouth. <laughs> He's like, yeah, nah, man. like a dinosaur rock. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, hold my hand now. Can you put it there and you can come back and get it? Okay. Maybe we're going to just go over here and have a look first. Holy moly. Yes, the road. road. Yeah. That's where we were looking from. So we've made it to our destination, which is McMillan's Lookout. Uh, McMillan's. 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 We actually drove past this on the way to our camp. We're like, how cool is that mountain? And I saw there was a lookout. And he's like, no, you can't get up there. I'm like, yeah, you can. So we drove it. <laughs> crazy because what it looks like from down on the road we need to film this on the way out you look up at a hill it's probably one of the biggest hills in the area and it's just proper rock but it looks super steep and it's like surely there's not a track on top of there it can't be like it physically can't be but then Sean jumped on the hammer and she said there's a track that goes right over the bloody top of the hill and down the other side and everything and then that's where <laughs> we decided to go bugger it Let's go and check it out. And that's exactly why we're here right now to hear, to come and see this from the roadside. It is high country spec. It is amazing. It just, it blows me away every single time. You have to get out here. If you've never been and you love exploring and doing all this sort of stuff, got to do it, got to do it. But the best part is we are not now in National Park. And that only means one thing, got to get that bloody drone up. Let's go, I'm going to do it.
We made it. Oh, we're out. What a loop that was. So we've just popped out, as you can see right here. <laughs> Your lights still I'll see where the party lights on. I just reminded myself I'm going to turn them <laughs> off before I go on the main road. <laughs> I found that really funny when I saw them earlier. I'm like, why are they on? I just had a random thought. I'm like, I've got these bloody lights underneath there. Why not? If it gets dark enough, you might be able to get some cool fun shots. Yes, I have party lights for anyone that didn't know. If you haven't got party lights, you're not cool. They're all the way under like all the wheel arches in the back of the car as well. Like yeah, the whole and the thing front of the grill. Up. Yeah, like it looks like a cop car if I get the right colours going. Yeah, but, um, good. Yeah, but we've made it. That was a pretty cool loop. It was pretty fun. Yeah. yeah it's funny because just before like the last half of that was probably the, the more entertaining side of it, I reckon. Yeah. It was actually quite steep, shaly, um, very tight tracks. Like it'd be interesting to go the other way. Yeah, going back up would be even just as much yeah. fun as well. But um, yeah, no, it's, it was a good day out. It's what, now nearly about four o'clock, I think. Maybe we could do that as our four wheel drive loop for the camp out. Oh, it's, we'd have to make sure that everyone's quite experienced, I reckon. Extreme four wheel drive loop. Yeah, well, it's not extreme, but it's extreme. Yeah, but you have to say that. Yeah, it's hard to judge people's experience, like levels. Yeah. You just don't know. Like, you might get halfway there and someone's like, nah, can't do it, I'm freaking out, done. And it's like, we could spend four hours on one half of a track. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. I'll take you back and show you a bit of dinner and we'll call it there, I reckon. Hope you don't. shaky arm. Oh, yeah. Is it getting heavy? It's... <laughs> My arm's about to give out! <laughs>because we were at the butcher, no, we're at, uh, I'm gonna start this all over again. Holy shit, I gotta think about what I'm doing. So we've been out this morning, uh, we stopped through, what's the town called? La Cola. Oh, let's do it. Four wheel drive journey. 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 I've said very, very cool so many times. I gotta stop saying it. Very cool. Drinking game. <laughs> Um, are you ready? Sure. Filming? Yeah. Hey legends, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Please like, subscribe and tell your friends. If you need more of a Big Oz fix, head over to our website, bigozexplorers.com for merch, information on our setup, places we've been, recipes, links to our socials, and much more. We look forward to seeing you for a new adventure next week. Cheers, guys.